Mayor Pro Tem Jackson, my fellow city council members, my fellow citizens and friends, good evening. Let us not grow weary in doing good, scripture tells us. Over the past 12 months, as our city was buffeted by the fierce cross currents of a global pandemic, a national reckoning on race, and a sharp economic downturn, no one would have blamed our citizens for failing to heed that call. Hearts harden in hard times, people say. That's just the way of the world. But that's not the way of Charleston. Time and again, as the storms of 2020 raged, our citizens refused to grow weary in doing good. They stayed at home when asked. They helped their neighbor when needed. They gave to charity when able. And by their example, they reminded us that the true state of our city cannot be measured by buildings and bridges or dollars and cents. It's measured in the skills and compassion of our doctors and nurses. It's measured in the service and sacrifice of our police and firefighters and sanitation workers. It's measured in the values and perseverance of our business leaders and workers. It's measured in the decency and devotion of our parents and teachers and everyday citizens. And it is by that measure, the measure of our people, that I can report to you tonight that the state of our city is strong, Charleston strong. My fellow Charlestonians, it is that strength that gives us confidence and optimism as we look forward to a year ahead, a year in which our city will continue to plan and break ground on new parks and playgrounds, new transportation improvements, new drainage and public safety infrastructure and more. But tonight, Rather than testing your patience with a long laundry list of plans and projects, I'd like to focus instead on four critical questions facing our city in 2021. Questions that will likely shape our destiny for decades to come. First and most immediate, how can we continue to protect ourselves from COVID-19? And when will this pandemic and the associated economic downturn end. Since its emergence in China early last year, the novel co coronavirus has spread across the globe with startling speed and deadly efficiency, claiming the lives of more than two million people globally, including almost 6,000 of our very own right here in South Carolina. And as that heartbreaking toll has grown, it has forced all of us to take extraordinary actions to protect ourselves, our families, our businesses, our community. Here in Charleston, that effort begins with our healthcare workers, the remarkable men and women of the Medical University of South Carolina, of Roper St. Francis, of DHEC, of Fetter, of many other health providers. Every step of the way, from the closures of early spring to the mass requirements of today, their expertise and advice have ensured that our city's response to this emergency has always been grounded in the best science and metrics available. And they've done this while also providing the most advanced and compassionate care to every patient affected by this terrible disease. They are the heroes of this pandemic, and we thank them deeply for their service. And now, with effective vaccines in hand, our path is clear. First, our dedicated city staff, which has been nothing short of remarkable throughout this crisis, must continue to work with our medical and business communities to prepare for the day soon when large amounts of the vaccine are available and widely distributed. Second, we must redouble our efforts to follow the rules. And yes, that means washing our hands keeping our distance and wearing a mask. Finally, we must continue to support our local and small businesses with innovative initiatives, such as our new Central Business District Improvement Commission, our revolving loan fund, the changes we're making to parking and zoning issues, and even more. If we do these things, we can save lives and help our business community now. 
and look forward to the simple pleasures of hugging a friend, visiting an older relative, or enjoying a show well before the end of this year. The second question we face is as old as our city and as urgent as now. Do we really believe what we say about liberty and justice for all? And what are we willing to do to achieve it? From our founding in April of 1670 to this very day in January of 2021, the problems of racial oppression and injustice have torn at our city's soul. As we know that to heal that breach, we must finally and fully eliminate the systemic barriers that continue to make the dream of racial equity a deferred dream. Will this work be quick and easy? Of course not. But for the first time in our long and complicated history, we can begin to imagine that shared future and opportunities for all of our citizens. Over the past five and a half years, since the tragedy at Mother Emanuel, we have seen our citizens come together in large and small groups to think deeply about the issue of racial justice and to press for structural changes in our city and its institutions. Already that work has paid dividends with the city's apology for its role in slavery, the removal of the Calhoun Memorial from Marion Square, the independent racial bias audit of our police department, which is already hard at work implementing the report's many recommendations for reform. As a result, the stage is now set here in 2021 for real and meaningful progress towards equity and inclusion for all our citizens. As our Commission on Equity, Diversity, and Racial Conciliation readies its far-reaching proposals for City Council, and also the International African American Museum moves ahead with its plans to excavate the forgotten stories, the suppressed stories of Charleston's black citizens, and to begin sharing that remarkable history with the world. The third question I'd like to discuss with you this evening is frankly existential. How will we secure Charleston's future as the climate continues to change and the waters continue to rise. At this point, we all understand the threat our city faces from flooding. And we know that without bold action, the future can only be one of surrender and retreat. Currently, we have a sound strategic plan in place and millions of dollars in flood preve prevention work underway throughout the city with major projects moving forward, West Ashley, on the peninsula, and on James and John's Island. In addition, we have three major decisions ahead of us in 2021 that will set the course for our climate and flooding protection strategy for years to come. First, we will consider a new citywide comprehensive plan that puts flooding at the center of our future development decisions by implementing the land use recommendations of the Dutch Dialogues. Second, we will decide whether to move forward with the Army Corps of Engineers plan to build a seawall around the peninsula, a project that will provide protection from storm surge and rising sea level, as well as the potential for approximately $1 billion in much needed federal flooding assistance. In that regard, I'm pleased to announce tonight that the city is currently working to add a new drainage component to our existing partnership with the Army Corps. With this initiative in place, Charleston would not only receive the benefit of their world-class engineering expertise for drainage, we would once again have the opportunity to unlock federal matching funds for long-term flooding and drainage needs. And third, we are working on our city's climate action plan, a detailed strategy to reduce emissions and help us do our part to mitigate climate change. And with that process now moving forward, we intend to bring the climate change plan to council this year. The final question before us tonight is this, how can we preserve affordability in our housing market to ensure that Charleston remains a working city in years to come. 
Like successful cities all over America, Charleston is experiencing what has rightly been called a crisis in housing affordability. In fact, without decisive action, Charleston could one day become less a city and more a fleeting pleasure for well-to-do visitors, out-of-state students, and part-time second homeowners. To guard against this, Charleston is fighting on every housing front. First, we're directly investing $50 million in affordable housing across the city and leveraging even more to produce 1,000 new units. Second, we're requiring all large-scale mixed-use developments to either make 20% of the units affordable or pay an equivalent fee in lieu into our housing funds. Finally, we're cutting bureaucratic red tape and working to enable the kind of infill development that increases the overall supply of housing, which help hold costs down. Looking ahead, we're working with our local partners to establish and fund new initiatives, including a countywide affordable housing plan and a regional housing trust. My fellow Charlestonians, as the coronavirus and uh, reminded us in 2020, tomorrow is always a mystery. So we cannot say for certain what new challenges 2021 will bring. But because we know ourselves and our city, we can say this, whatever the challenge, whatever the test, we will not hide, we will not shrink, we will not fail, and even more, we will not grow weary from doing good. Thank you. God bless you. God bless the great city of Charleston. Good night.